Onion Share, a super underrated open source tool utilizing Tor for file hosting, onion hosting, and more that very few people seem to discuss. It's really easy to complain about all the problems in the privacy world, but today I want to actually show you something that will make it better and how this tool works and why it's so important. If you believe in freedom, privacy, and control, this tool's for you and you should have it installed in your computer. Let's go ahead and kick this off with our sponsor. This video is sponsored by Cake Wallet, an open source cryptocurrency wallet and exchange for iOS and Android to keep your crypto assets safe. They support Monero, Bitcoin, and Litecoin with a ton of awesome features to not only make cryptocurrencies easy, but private and secure. Tune in later for why we're massive fans of Cake Wallet. So I know many of you remember Firefox Send, which was an easy way for you to upload some files online without an account and share the link to people you know. Sadly, it disappeared one day. There are some other sites that do this. Many of them don't stay around very long before falling apart or moving to a paid business model or just requiring you to create an account. In the perfect world though, we can bypass all of this nonsense and you, yes, you can directly share a file with anyone else in the world without a central party. Seems like it's not possible, but this is what OnionShare does. With OnionShare, you become your own server that you can use to send any sized file to any person in the world through the Tor network. So let's go ahead and break down all of OnionShare's tools. File sharing, file receiving, Onion website hosting, and chatting. Without further ado, let's cover file sharing. The first step is downloading the program. It's just like any other desktop program and it's available on Windows, Linux, and Mac OS. If you're on an M1 MacBook, be aware you need to right click the application and manually check open with Rosetta or else it won't open. Step two is downloading the Brave browser or ideally the Tor browser bundle. Either will work for the purposes of this guide. If you just wanna test things out real quick, Brave is fine and you might already have it installed, but if anonymity is your goal, go for the Tor browser. Tor browser is also better because it allows you to use private keys with OnionShare, which we will talk about um, throughout this tutorial. Step three, open OnionShare and wait for it to open. And of course, connect to the Tor network. Just a reminder, while this is connecting, that Tor is an anonymity network that protects your privacy, and if you want to learn more, I'll leave a guide on Tor from our course Go Incognito in the description and as a card. Step four, we're going to go ahead and click Share Files. Now, I want to upload this Onion Share logo to the internet. It can be to the public, so I can share a link with the world and put it in the description of this video if I wanted to, or it could be to a single individual. I will show you how to do both. You're going to click Add Files or Add Folder. As the name applies, if you wanna upload a folder, you click folder, and if you wanna upload a file, you click file. So today we are doing a file. You're gonna go ahead and open the desktop file, and then you're gonna to come to this page. Step five is configuration. You can stop sharing after files have been sent, which essentially makes this a one-time download, or you can keep it live indefinitely. So I'm gonna go ahead and uncheck this. You can save the tab, which essentially means if you close out of Onion Share, it'll reopen the tab. You're gonna see this pinned icon up there, which essentially keeps the, the tab pinned, and you can see we can open multiple tabs. We'll cover that later in the video. You also have the choice of enabling or disabling a private key. By default, it will enable a private key, meaning if you send the link to someone, eventually there's gonna be a link. If you send them the link to download the file, they'll also need the key to access the file, improving the security and ensuring only you two are accessing the URL to download the file. Now it's worth mentioning the private key makes a lot of sense between you and someone else, but it doesn't make much sense if you're planning to use like a public onion service, which is what this says. So if I'm looking to share this file again in the description with all of you people watching this video, there's no way I'm gonna be able to share the private key with each of you individually. So I would say this is a public onion share service, which is what we're going to select for now. You can put a custom title and also you can start and stop the onion service at a scheduled time. When you're sharing the file, and we'll talk about this more soon, you have to keep the program open. And so you can choose when or when not to have the file being shared. From there, all you do is click start sharing. And that's step six. Give it a second. Now you're going to see a link. This is how anyone can download the file. Keep in mind that OnionShare is peer-to-peer, -peer, meaning there's no central entity who's gonna be hosting this file. This means you have to keep OnionShare open for this link to work and for the file to continue to be live. If you share the link with someone and shut down the program, none of this will work. 
Aside from just the link, if you have a private key, which in this case we do, you also need to make sure whoever you want to be able to download the file also has the private key or else they won't be able to access a file. If you chose to make this a public service and you click start sharing, you're gonna see that all you have is a, a URL because there's no need for a private key and there's nothing else you need to share. Step seven is for the receiving end, which is the person who's actually gonna be downloading the file. So if you're watching this tutorial, this is probably not going to be you, but the person you're sharing the file with. So first go ahead and copy the address. Now, if you open a standard browser and you try going to this address, you're gonna see that you can access the page. And this is gonna happen to pretty much any browser. This is because Onion links can only be accessed via the Tor network. So you have to be utilizing something that goes through Tor. One of the reasons I said you can download Brave for this tutorial is that Brave comes with a Tor window option, which you can access in the drop-down menu and new private window with Tor right here. You're gonna go ahead and click enter. It's probably gonna give us an HTTPS warning. You can go ahead and continue to cite, and here it is. It's that simple. You click download files, and you'll be able to download the file. Easy as that. One note, the Brave Tor window is not as safe as using the actual Tor browser. There's another good reason to use the Tor browser bundle, and here's why. If we stop sharing and we make this a private, and we, and we sorry, and we enable the private key, all right, so now we're gonna copy the address like we just did. We're gonna paste that into Brave. You're gonna go ahead and continue to cite just like we did, but now watch what happens. This site can't be reached. This is because Brave never prompted us for a private key. And as far as I'm aware, someone please correct me if I'm wrong, there's no way to actually tell Brave, hey, this URL requires a private key to access. Now, if we open the Tor browser, which is here, this is the Tor Browser Bundle. If we copy that address and paste it in here, it now asks us for a private key. We're gonna go ahead, copy the private key, paste it, and now we're in. So that's a really good incentive for those of you to consider just using the Tor Browser, which is safer anyway, so you're getting really the best of all worlds by using the Tor Browser. With that said, I still use Brave's Tor Browser window because it's a very easy and convenient way for me to access some Onion URLs that I don't need absolute safety for. So again, it's fine to have both, but if you're gonna just pick one, I do recommend going with the Tor Browser, but Brave windows do work as well, as long as you're not using private keys. And that's the beauty of Onion Share. Don't mind me, I'm just gonna look at the script because I don't have it memorized. You click share, you keep your system running as long as you want, and you share that link with whoever you want. If it's just a few select people, consider using a private key. If it's gonna be for the public, consider just using a no private key. It's also worth mentioning, this is all going through the Tor anonymity network. So you're gaining a huge layer of safety here by doing this more than even if you were to use something like Firefox Send. Not to mention not needing to rely on a central entity. It's freaking cool as hell. More people need to use these tools. They are fantastic. It's also worth mentioning that um, you can access Onion URLs on mobile. On iOS, there's Onion Browser, and on Android, there is the official Tor Browser. You can just type in Tor Browser to any app store. So as long as someone has a browser that can open Onion links, they can access these files from pretty much any device. The next function of Onion Share is file receiving. So let's say someone doesn't use Onion Share and they need to send you a file. You can essentially host a file drop for them using the receive files functionality, allowing anyone with the link to upload a file that'll magically appear on your system. This is especially useful if you're someone who's able to leave your system running 24 seven and the person trying to get you files isn't quite able to do that. It should go without saying, be careful with this feature because you are quite literally allowing anyone possibly to upload a file directly to your system. Setup is super similar. Rather than um, up choosing a file to upload, you're going to choose where to save files to. In this case, we're just gonna keep it to be our desktop. Um, I'll explain disable submit text and disable upload files later. You can use a notification so that you can be notified when uh, things are uploaded. You can save the tab, just like I said before, that'll pin the tab. So next time you open Onion Share, things will automatically open. Just like sharing files, you can make this a public service or a private service. And just like the previous one, if you use a private key, you have to get that private key to the person. And if you don't use a private key, it'll just be public and anyone with the link can access it. And just like the previous one, you can start these at a scheduled time. You go ahead and click start receiving. And there you go. 
You can now have an address if we go ahead and open the Tor browser and load this instead. This is what it'll look like. So first off, let's just do the message. Hello, this is Henry from a different dimension. If you click submit, you're gonna see a folder with the date. You go ahead and open that and you're gonna get a .txt file with the message the person sent. Likewise, you can just upload a file. So I can go ahead and upload that Onion Share logo. And I can go ahead and click Submit, and it's going to upload the file, well, to myself. Now if we close out of the Tor browser and we open the file, you're gonna see that there's a second folder here, and now we have uh, two of the same file. So it uploaded the same file and downloaded it here. Now, those two functionalities might make more sense. So you can disable submitting text right, which is this functionality, and you can make it only files. You can also disable files and make this only text. Next up, hosting a website. Now this will be hosting an Onion site, meaning you could have your normal site, in, in our example, it's techlore.tech. If you go to techlore.tech, that's our website. This is going to host an Onion version of the website that's only accessible via the Tor browser. I highly recommend you only do this with static websites. In fact, I don't even know if this will work unless the site is static. So for us, you again, add a file or folder for your website. Now, first up, by default, OnionShare will send a very strict CSP header, which will pretty much stop any third-party dependencies that your site has. If your site breaks when you do this, um, it's probably because of this check mark. So I have to click Don't Send. Um, you can save this tab and automatically open it. Again, that's the pin feature that we already talked about. So when you open OnionShare, it'll automatically start up. Again, people, this is a public service. Um, just as an example, I'm going to go ahead and do this. So TechLore website and this is a public service theoretically we could have anyone access it and then we can also choose when to start and when to stop the onion service if, if we wanted to make it time sensitive go ahead and click start sharing and again this is for a static website we're going to go ahead and copy that address open the tour browser and it's slowly loading and here's our website um, it was literally that easy. So if you have a static website, you can just load it into OnionShare, have it running all day on maybe a low power machine like a Raspberry Pi, and you now effectively have a server in your home. It's probably not gonna do great for high demands. It's probably not gonna be better than running your own server that you have Tor running on. But if you're just looking for a quick website host and you need to quickly get something out there, this is a great way to do that. This is incredibly cool. And again, you can set this up with a private key as well. And with a private key, the person would also need to have a key aside from just the link. OnionShare constantly shocks me with how cool it is. Like. We've already covered three fantastic things and there's one more cool thing that I wanna show you and it blows my mind. Um, if you have a static website, just like that, within a few clicks, you can make it an Onion site. So the final thing here is chat anonymously. Very easy functionality here. You can have a custom title. You can make this a public service. So let's say that we wanted to have like a public tech lore chat. Um, you can also save it again and automatically open. You can also have it uh, start and stop at certain times of the day, just like the other three features. Click Start Chat Server. Go ahead and click Copy Address, and we're gonna do this in the Tor Browser as well. And here you go, it's super bare bones, people. Henry, that's my username, and then I can go ahead and send a message. Hello, testing, testing, is anyone there? I wonder, um, let's see, it didn't get my new username. Oh, okay, so you have to click enter to get a new username. Hello, my name is Henry. Anyone alive? So just to show you how this works, I'll go ahead and open Brave. And then if we load the same link into Brave, which again, we can use Brave because there's no private key involved. Go ahead and continue the site. Do, 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 It is worth mentioning that um, you're not going to be seeing previous chat history. So make sure when you're starting these chats that um, you are sending things when everyone is in the chat. Um, so your username, Benry, Henry's evil twin. So I have now joined over here. It has not updated my username yet, but if I go ahead and send the message, 
I am Benry. Mwahahaha. Okay, now it updated on the other end there before I sent the message. So it's just a little slow. It is Tor after all. But I'll go ahead, went ahead and send a message. I am Benry. Ha 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 ha. So now you see on here, there it is. And there's only one message. But if I type it out here, how did you find me? And it's going to show you the users here. I assume if you uh, have more users join, uh, you're going to see a massive list here. Pretty cool stuff. Really, the last thing I would really outline for you, you can go ahead and go into settings here and you have different uh, abilities to connect via Tor, though for most people just leaving the default to fine. You can use bridges if Tor is blocked uh, where you are. You can auto check for updates, which big proponent of, definitely do that. And you can also have a light and dark theme. Lastly, I do wanna mention that you can open multiple tabs. Save this tab, boom, it'll pin that tab, start sharing. Uh, let's go ahead and set up a receive service, save this tab and automatically open, start receive mode. So this is live, see it's yellow. So just to kind of give you like what it looks like if you're doing multiple things. This is green as well, that's green. And so you can have all four things running at the same time. Let's say you accidentally close out or your computer shuts down. Okay, you're gonna go ahead and click okay. It'll cancel tour, now we're gonna open it up again. It's gonna connect you to the tour network. And as you can see, it actually saved the stuff. So it doesn't continue sharing right away automatically. You do have to click start again, but this is like the closest thing to automating the process. There, it's already back live. Aside from the amazing user interface and ease of use, Cake Wallet can convert whatever cryptocurrency you're invested in to XMR within the app without KYC. No more uploading your ID. You can then easily convert this into a cryptocurrency like Monero directly in the app. It's incredibly easy and offers a truly compelling product all around for those looking to get started with cryptocurrencies. Check out Cake Wallet down in the description. It's free and open source and a fantastic service. So to bring everything back, Onion Share is a ridiculously underrated tool that does so many amazing things. It allows you to interact with the world without needing to trust or rely any central parties or middlemen, and is arguably the closest thing you have to interacting with someone one-on-one -on -one in the real world and just giving them a flash drive with the data they need. It's open source, it uses Tor, it works on Windows, Mac OS, and Linux, and it's not terribly difficult to explain to your friends and family how to just access an Onion link. It's really a fantastic tool. Um, you're missing out if you're not using it. It's something that I love to use when I get the opportunity to use it, which is less frequently than I can probably use it, but um, that's kind of why I'm making this video. I think it's important for you all to um, see what this tool looks like, and it's good inspiration for me to like actually like re-fall in love with the tool and feel inspired to actually go out of my way, inconvenience myself to use a tool like this. And um, I think that the more we do that, uh, the better that things will be. It's also worth mentioning, this is a great introduction to Tor for a non-privacy purpose. Um, a lot of people have limited file storage. They don't want to open a new Google Drive account uh, and all that stuff. And this is a great opportunity for you to tell someone, hey, I'm sharing this to you for free without any middlemen, without any accounts, without having to pay for anything. And you can do the same thing at your home. All you need to do is understand how Tor works. So Tor is beyond a privacy tool here, in my opinion. It also has a great uh, side motive of being a privacy tool, but at the end of the day, this is just a fantastic use case that I think many people can benefit from. So the more of you uh, that can hop your friends over to using something like this, the better. Thank you so much to our sponsor. And of course, check out our Patreon at patreon.com slash techlore. You're gonna see people going on the bottom of the screen right now, and they are our largest supporters, and I can't thank them enough. Thank you so much for watching, and see you next time on Techlore. Yeah.